Hello, everyone. Bridget Ayer here with All About the Grace. And on this channel, I talk about faith, culture, and media. And today I'm going to be starting a new series called Setting the Captives Free. And in this series, we're really going to be talking about things that trip us up or that keep us captive when we are trying to live out the Catholic uh, faith life or the Christian life, the Christian journey. So I want to, I'm going to be having several different Catholic mental health professionals as guests, as well as um, other guests that will talk about this topic from a spiritual perspective or a perspective that they specialize in. We're going to talk about all different topics from anxiety, depression, to anything that will get you stuck in your faith life, anything that would be an obstacle or anything that's trapping you. I mean, it could even be (laughs) digital media, ironically, but this is exactly what we're going to do. And my first guest is uh, Judy Phillips. She is a pastoral care associate and Uh, We are going to be joining her shortly. Uh, If you have not clicked subscribe, please do click subscribe to my channel. It helps me out a lot. And one more thing, I do have a new book. It's called Breaking New Ground, Discipleship Using New Media. It is available on Amazon, or you can go to my website, which is allaboutthegrace.com. That's my blog and my website. You can get my book there. Just uh, click there. And I do go around and speak around the United States and outside the country on digital media and discipleship. So if you're ever looking for a speaker, you can uh, find me at allaboutthegrace.com and send a message and I will respond and we can schedule something. So thank you very much. And okay, let's get started. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. It's great to be with you today. I am very excited to welcome our guest. We're going to be actually talking about uh, uh, something that will help me a lot is how to kick bad habits and to, ve- and to develop virtues. And joining us today is Judy Phillips. She is a clinical pastoral associate in distance counseling with Pastoral Solutions. Welcome, Judy. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's always a joy to be with you, Bridget. Yes, and it, it's so fun because I always learn so much uh, from you and from all of our wonderful guests that we have. Well, before we get into our topic of um, kicking bad habits and developing virtues, I want to ask you a little bit about the work that you do. And um, you're a Catholic mental health professional, correct? That's right. So um, I've been in the field of mental health for over 20 years now, but specifically um, I've been with Dr. Greg Popcheck, who has Pastoral Solutions Institute. Some people may be familiar with us through the label CatholicCounselors.com. And I've been with him for the past five years. So we um, offer telephone counseling to faithful Catholics um, and regarding situations, issues that they're dealing with. All of our work is focused from the perspective of how God has created us. So the Catholic understanding and vision of the human person and what God intends for us. And the work that we do with our clients is directed in that way, that that it's all in cooperation with God's plan for us. So we're integrating our Catholic theology and spirituality into all of those sessions. And what I, what I like about, um, you and, and talking to you about these topics that we all are dealing with is that you do come, um, to these topics from a, not just a mental health, um, perspective, but a Catholic mental health perspective. And that is definitely valuable and unique and, and great for our audience because that's what they're interested in. (laughs) So I want to ask you. And maybe you can give us your, maybe it's the same definition, but from the mental health perspective and maybe from the Catholic perspective, what is a habit? And and it it might not be bad or good, right? It it could just be something you do regularly, right? So what's that? Right. Yeah, pretty much that is it. It's it's a a routine, um, a, a behavior that we have kind of put in place and practiced over time that it becomes something that really is um, unconscious. We don't have to put a lot of 
thought into doing it. And so it, it just comes about. I mean, um, I was, you know, in preparation for this, I went to the dictionary, of course. So, you know, Webster has a, a, a meaning that says a habit is a usual manner of behavior, an acquired mode of behavior that has become nearly or completely involuntary. Yeah. And when, and when those habits are good habits, that's such a nice thing to, for them to be automatic, but when they're bad, it just, you know, if you're not even aware that you're doing it, uh, yes. it, that makes it even more difficult. I would think to kind of get out of it, I guess. It, it does make it difficult. Um, and, and you raise an important point there, Bridget, when you say, if you're not even aware of it, because awareness is the key to so many things. I mean, especially changing behavioral practices. And so, um, you know, we, we have to work on having the awareness. That really is the first step in making change is awareness. So yeah, it does, it is, uh, more difficult when we're not aware of it. And, and then, those, those habits that we may fall into that are that don't bring us to be our best selves, uh, certainly those are challenging. We all know that. Yeah, and I was I was curious as I was preparing for this. Well, two two things I want to share with you and our audience is that when I was reading the scripture verses for today's mass readings, and obviously it's going to be different when this airs or when you see it, but it was uh, something about virtue in the Old Testament and Ezekiel, and I was like, "Wow, that's a Holy Spirit confirmation. <laughs> that's the topic I'm talking about today." And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I just thought that was great. But but the question I had was, what's the difference between or is there a difference between a habit and an addiction? So <laughs> that's I mean, a really good question. And I'm sure we could talk about that for probably, probably do a whole semester class on that, but. Right, right, right. Well, so um, again, in kind of preparing for this, I went to take a look to see, you know, what what's out there. Um, and because I, I'm thinking from a Catholic perspective that I was thinking, well, really, habits kind of fall into virtue. Um, and uh, so so I was thinking it's, you know, either you're in the place of having uh, a good habit that leads you more fully to be the person that God created you to be or not leads you away from it. But in the field of mental health specifically that I was looking at some um, research there, they talk about the fact that it's there's some confusion about whether there really is a difference between, um, you know, uh, a habit and an addiction. But ultimately, what it comes down to is that um, with a habit, you are still in the place of more or less being in control, um, okay. making choices, um, whereas with with an addiction, there really is not the um, opportunity for the person to be able to make a rational, decisive choice. That's the difference. It almost becomes a drive. It's kind of where it gets to the point that, uh, I mean, and people who may be listening to this may have had experiences with this themselves or uh, with loved ones or friends that they may know where it almost the the, the person who is struggling with the addiction it, it's almost a drive like they can't uh, control it themselves oftentimes people will um, they'll be preoccupied with how they're going to get their next quote fix and and I'm not talking only about like substances I'm talking about any addiction that a person might have whether that's with spending, whether it's with gambling, whether it's with food, whether that's with uh, pornography or something like that, you know, that that uh, thing, whatever it is, whatever is directed toward the addiction becomes the sole focus. It consumes the person. 
We're talking with Judy Phillips. She's a clinical pastoral associate in distance counseling with Pastoral Solutions, also known as CatholicCounselors.com. And I want to ask, I was thinking about virtues and I was thinking about saints as I was thinking about virtues. And I won't go off into a tangent on saints right now, but I will get to that later. But I want to ask you, what's a virtue then? Talk about what a virtue is, either from a Catholic, I guess, from a Catholic perspective, or maybe even a mental health perspective. I don't know if they even have a definition for that, what a virtue would be. Um, Well, I think there are some general definitions out there, but I think, uh, you know, from the field of mental health or just society in general, but I think all of them kind of glean from really, I mean, as I looked at them, all the different definitions of a virtue out there. all of them kind of glean from really what the catechism of the Catholic Church says. And so I'm going to just quote from the catechism because they say it best, but uh, paragraph 1803 says, a virtue, a virtue is an habitual and firm disposition to do the good. It allows a person not only to perform good acts, but to give the best of himself. The virtuous person tends toward the good with all his sensory and spiritual powers. He chooses the good in concrete actions. Yeah. And, and that is when you mention the word chooses, I mean, I think that's kind of where, you know, we're at as Catholics, you know, we're recording this during Lent, but this is a decision that we have to make every day. Am I going to choose to do the good, the virtuous thing, you know, or am I going to not do the virtuous thing or do something bad a vice or something? And I, w- I want to get into the saints. And I, I know that you know a lot about the saints as well. And, and not, not to put you on the spot, but I just know growing up for myself, I mean, I, I thought the saints were just perfect and that they, you know, they didn't have any struggles, but as as I've gotten older and I've read lives of the saints, I thought, wow, they're, they're so much like me, or they're so much in, in the sense that they struggled with either what God was calling them to do or just daily life. I mean, it's not like they were <laughs> living in a bubble, you know? Right. Yes. Yeah. I would agree. I, I love the humanity of the saints. Now I think there are certain saints that, um, they, they seem like they were living in a bubble, you know, I just think yeah. they really were able to, cooperate so well with God's beautiful grace. But there are others like two right off the top of my head that come to my mind. Like I love St. Peter and Mm. I love St. Paul, both of them, because like I think about St. Peter because of his humanity that we see throughout scripture. I can so identify with that, like open my mouth, put my foot in. It's like, I think I'm doing the right thing. And then it's like, Jesus is like, oh, Judy, come on now. But I identify with his humanity. And then St. Paul, especially because of just the radical conversion that he had, you know, like if we think about the fact that he was killing Christians at that time, and then he has this radical conversion. And afterwards, he is the one that's out there just on the front lines. I mean, he was being actively persecuted. He was locked up multiple times, but he didn't stop. And I just love that zeal and and his courage, you know? So anyway, those are two that just popped into my head that I, I, I always think about them. They give me strength to do the right thing, to do the good. Well, it's funny. I did not know that about you, Judy. And that's another reason why I think maybe you and I get along because I, <laughs> Uh, St. Peter, I, I can really relate to him and I might be revealing too much here, but I feel like I'm a lot like him. So for good or bad, I don't know, but, uh, both, you know, so, um, yeah, I can, I can relate to that. Well, we need to take a quick break and we come back. We're going to talk more about how to kick habits and to build virtue. Uh, we're talking with Judy Phillips. So we'll be right back. So stay tuned for more. Don't be shy. Life won't bring you down too far. Welcome back. I'm Bridget Ayer, and I am talking with Judy Phillips. She is a clinical pastoral associate in distance counseling with Pastoral Solutions, also known as CatholicCounselors.com. And I want to, we're talking about kicking bad habits and building virtue. Okay, Judy, what's easier? Is it easier to 
kick a bad habit or to start a new virtue or start a new habit? I mean, I don't know. Maybe that's hard. Maybe it depends on the person. I know that was a really tough question. Okay. Well, all right. Well, answer that however you want. And then I'll ask you something else. (laughs) Okay. Okay. I I think that's, I think it's hard to say. I am, I'm inclined to say that it's probably easier to build, to start building a new virtue. Um, and I, and I say that because when I think through it, like from a brain perspective, um, if you're thinking about building a new virtue, you're already inclined in that direction towards the good. And so your, your brain is already kind of working in that direction. And, uh, it doesn't mean that it won't be difficult because there are always challenges. We're always fighting against our humanity and the effects of original sin. But um, I, I guess I'm thinking that, you know, in some ways it's probably easier to to build a new virtue than it is to break a bad habit. Um, but, you know, in, in breaking a bad habit, there's, again, there's some mixture of like, how long does it really take to break a bad habit. Yeah. But again, going back to what we were saying, and even kind of, you know, I think the catechism's definition of virtue uh, points us in the direction of, you know, the thing is awareness is so important. Um, So God created us and created our brains in such a way that, that we do have the ability to, to be aware in the present moment at all times. Now, again, in our humanity, because we're so easily distracted, we can lose that awareness. And so that's why it takes so much effort. We have to really work to train our brains. But, you know, it comes back to this awareness of ourselves and myself and the choices that I'm making. And I think oftentimes, as as I mentioned, um, with a habit, it gets to the point where it's almost subconscious so breaking a bad habit is going to really require us to work to bring our brain to the present moment awareness of those behaviors in order to begin to change that so when someone is is wanting to break a bad habit or start a new virtue uh should you only do one thing at a time or should you try to replace the bad thing with something else else or is that too much to do at one time i i it seems like i always try to do too much and that is like an epic failure on all levels <laughs> <laughs> that's a really great question and a good point too i think most all of us probably can admit to doing that i know myself i can try to take on too much and then it's like it breaks down you know the thing is um I think one of the things that I most appreciate about Dr. Popcheck that I work with is he's so fantastic about reminding people that it's about the small steps. It's little steps. And truth be told, I think all of us and probably the saints, if we could talk to them now, would tell us the same thing in their lives, you know, that it's about deciding first and foremost. So I'm bringing that awareness, you know, and then I'm going to take the small step, the next right small step. And I think then it's kind of intertwined. You know, you ask that question, is it is it better to, you know, build the virtue or break the habit? I think if we're bringing awareness to ourselves, those things are going to kind of be happening simultaneously, actually, um, if we're making a conscious effort. Because if we're making the effort towards the good, the virtue, uh, then we're raising our awareness of the ways in which we're, we had been previously working against that, you know, we can then begin to naturally, in my present awareness, change those things. And yes, your, your question about, um, do you want to replace it with something different? Yes, absolutely. I, I tell people that I work with all the time, one of the biggest things about building virtue is you act opposite of how you feel you know there we go again because we know as human beings we have god created us to have the emotional brain as well as our logical rational brain and that's the beauty of virtue is that we bring both of those things together so i have the feeling i'm not trying to shove it down and repress it god intends me to know it and understand it but i'm going to act opposite i'm not i don't have to be controlled by my feelings. 
And, and again, that's a gift that God has given us when we're operating with both sides of our brains and our brain is in good balance. You know, we can then incorporate our will and our reason to choose rightly to do the good and, and to continue that. So, um, so it is in a sense, replacing, uh, you know, those choices that we've made before or those actions before where maybe we weren't as aware of ourselves towards the direction of the good. And even though I know that I'm feeling a certain way, like I really am wanting this, you know, a food item or something, <laughs> but I'm going to act opposite of that, you know, and, and then the other piece of that for us as Catholics, we know this, that it's, it's not just I'm acting opposite of it, but I'm offering up that struggle, that internal struggle that I have for some other good. It might be for somebody that I know, a certain intention that I have. Um, it might be for peace in the world, as we all know right now. Um, but because Christ died for us and his suffering and death give purpose and meaning to all of the suffering, the difficulties that we encounter. And that's just the beauty of it. It, it, it gives us strength then to continue on forward in that direction of, of choosing right and good and building virtue. How hard or, or do you think that or how important is the virtue of patience with yourself as it relates to either breaking a habit or developing a virtue? Because it just seems to me, I mean, I just know I can only speak for myself, but you know, it's just after you don't maybe make as much progress as you think you should, or whatever that means, um, you might just give up like, ah, that's too hard. Do you see that a lot? And, and how maybe patience isn't the right virtue, but I don't know, perseverance or maybe something else along those lines, you get where I'm going with that. I do. Yeah. Um, I, I think that uh, it, it is really important for us to be real with ourselves and our humanity. There are a multitude of spiritual books that are written about this. There are a couple that I think of, one that I've just been recently reading about um, by, by Jacques Philippe about um, maintaining peace, but also I think about St. Ignatius of Loyola, and he talks about these things all the time. Like it's going to happen. Like you have to just accept yourself in your humanity because we're this side of heaven and we're going to continue to encounter the effects of original sin. So know that and know and expect that discouragement and frustration is going to come, but we don't have to let it take us off track. We can, again, acknowledge it. Again, the beauty of how God created us. He wants us to know that, but he gives us in those moments there's a moment of invitation from him to say, look, this can help you grow. You know, you can use this uh, frustration, this difficulty for the purpose of learning more about yourself, understanding more about yourself, understanding more in the direction of where God is leading us also. So I think if we can go into it from that perspective and, and do the best that we can to be realistic with ourselves about how long it's going to take, because that's one of the questions, too, that oftentimes is asked is, you know, how long does it take to uh, build a new habit? Now, there was a period of time back in the 60s and into the 70s, and even I experienced the uh, this feedback when I was an undergraduate in the 80s, where there was this belief that it takes 21 days to build a new habit. Well, there's some truth to that. But um, I got to looking a little bit more closely at that recently, and um, there was a study done in the European Journal of Social Psychology, and what they actually found is that um, it takes from can take from 18 to 254 days to break a bad habit and begin begin to build a new one. So, you know, I say that to people because there's a wide range, you know, and depending on what it is that we're trying to do, what virtue we're trying to build and the difficulties that we've had with that in our lives in the past, it's going to have an impact on that and, and how quickly we're able to, to grow in that way. This is really interesting. I, I'm really, I, I'm curious, and it seems like you're bringing in a lot of about our Catholic faith, which is, which is great. And obviously that's why I'm doing this show, but, um, it seems like the Catholic faith and our faith life 
really does help us in these areas of both kicking bad habits and building virtue. You want to talk a little bit about that? And I know you have pretty much throughout this interview, but anything in particular that really, really, um, how our, how our Catholic faith really just helps us to, to do this? Well, I think if we, if we think about the fact that, first of all, we're created out of love and that God is love himself and that God created us for goodness. Like his desire is for goodness for us, even this side of heaven. Um, that, you know, we are created and we experience greatest satisfaction and true joy when we are ordered and directed directed towards goodness you know and that is the, that's that's the foundation of our faith i mean it's the truth of who we are and how god has created us and it really is at the core of our being in 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 the ways that um that he has created us so it's not easy again we all know that because we we have the tendency towards what we want the way we wanted that selfishness you know mm-hmm. but we find ourselves experience experiencing the greatest joy and the truest joy the long lasting joy that we all want when we follow that plan that god intends which is again directed towards the good and uh seeking to do the good you know i tell people all the time that and we don't we've i think we've lost this so much in our society um that any good any good that happens is from god period there's nothing more to be said about that so any good that i do it's not me of my own self that's doing that it's coming about because of god and um, i just think it's so important for us to remember that um because it, it it just helps us to have a deeper relationship with God. And um, it keeps, I think it keeps everything in a really more healthy, balanced perspective. I'd be remiss if I didn't ask this question, since you are a, a mental health professional, at what point does someone need to seek help outside of just breaking their bad habit? You know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. when, when do they need to seek uh, professional help? Yeah. Um, well, really, I say, you know, um, especially when a person is finding that uh, what they're dealing with is is interfering with their ability to function in daily life. Now, that can be to varying degrees, so we can understand that it can fall on a spectrum. But nonetheless, you find that either you're preoccupied with it or that it's limiting you and doing fulfilling, you know, whatever various responsibilities you have, depending on your state in life. Uh, it's interfering with relationships. Um, you seem to experience that it keeps um, tripping you up in some way that's when you really need to and and you keep like sort of repeating (laughs) the same thing yeah over and over again that's that's usually a really good indicator that like okay i need some help with this because what i'm trying to do isn't isn't working so would you go ahead um and give the website that of the practice that you um are with that if people want to reach out there Sure. Yeah. Um, so you can connect with us uh, at www.catholiccounselors.com. Um, there's also an 800 number that I have, if you want me to give that. Sure, go ahead. 800-274-4658. Well, we didn't get to all the bad habits and virtues. We have barely even scratched the surface, but we are out of time, Judy. Um, okay. Our guest today has been Judy Phillips clinical pastoral associate in distance counseling with pastoral solutions. You can get more information at catholiccounselors.com. Judy Phillips, thanks so much for being our guest today. Thank you so much for having me, Bridget. 